what we're going to show today is is a couple of number systems in this first section here we're going to do a traditional four five glass in the center we're going to do a hybrid system with a 90 95 or 100 gram uh, fiberglass base sheet and three plies of glass and then on the on the far end we're going to do a cold process roofing consisting of three plies okay these are all standard in the industry today we'll be showing a drain we're not going to flash a drain in because we have to tear this up and be out of here by 4 30 so okay um we're bringing the hot asphalt in the thing to remember about asphalt is it's very dangerous as it's up upwards of 450 to 500 degrees sometimes 600 by the time they bring it up on the roof if it splashes on you it's a immediate you have to leave it put it in cold water and let it cool so it's a very dangerous substance this is also the oldest roofing system that we have in today's market that's still going of course it's a 20 by 20 deck so it's very hard to show you a full application there everything we're going to do some modified flashings for you um, not traditional flashings where we would set everything in we've nailed things on the outside just because we only have an hour to do this okay so as we're waiting for the hot we'll keep going the thing to remember is we can we have a, a steel deck in this case we have vapor retires there's a number of different vapor retires that are acceptable um, this was left from single plies plastic is not acceptable for a BUR anytime you have hot asphalt we would use craft paper we would use a self-adhering modified or a foil face the thing and then we have a polyiso the energy code today says it has to be r31 so that's about five to six inches depending on your r factor your insulation you're using we usually do in in two layers the stagger the joints in this case we mechanically fasten it we would follow the fastening pattern of the manufacturer for the system <coughs> the thing that we have to do is then we put a cover board in this case we're using a, a half inch fiber board there are a number of other cover boards that are acceptable uh, they're all good equally good this is just the type we're showing today so it's coated one side so it helps keep the asphalt up above the fiber board so it doesn't soak in and you lose all your asphalt <coughs> there are specific rates between 20 to 25 pounds for mopping a, a fly, apply and that's to keep it the way to think of it is a tensile strength of uh, asphalt is like a pencil so if you have a big pencil nice and thick it's easy to snap if you have a small pencil it's harder to snap if the asphalt works the same way so it goes the, the thinner more is not always better is what I'm saying okay so the key to this system is that whatever we lay today you have to cover in membrane to protect it from the elements now it may not rain tonight but there could be dew and then all your boards will get wet and then you that's the worst thing you can do is trap moisture in your system safety is the most important factor we would all be tied off you know the safety belts or guard railings either or um, just waiting on the asphalt so. um, also like you'll see the mechanics have long sleeves on gloves these are paramount to using hot asphalt because if, like I said if it spills on you it's, it's not a nice burn okay we also would have hard hats safety goggles um, fire extinguisher we have here just in case so the contractor is responsible for walking the steel deck if it's new construction even if it's old construction you tear it off you're looking at the deck to make sure it's, it's solid there's no rust spots there's no holes in it that need to be replaced okay so <coughs> then you will put your vapor retarder down and that's usually held with an adhesive depending on the type of vapor barrier or self-adhering or it could be loose laid and just joints done if you're mechanically fastening your insulation. 
okay? One of the things about using a cover board such as fiber board or a, fiber or a cover board that has uh, an R factor in it is you'll break the thermal bridging of your mechanical fasteners. Because if you just leave that and put your membrane over top, you're gonna have uh, heat transfer come up and you can get condensation in there, which is gonna lead to your system failing prematurely. So, I don't know what the hold up is with the asphalt. I know it's gotta come a long way, but I didn't think I have to come that far. So there are a number of different types of insulations available. Um, doing a, a built-up roofing system is kind of like doing a puzzle. They're all different pieces and they fit together, but some of them don't fit with other ones. What you have to be concerned with is the performance of the insulation. There are some insulations that melt at 220 degrees. You're putting asphalt on at 450 degrees, they don't mix because they melt, okay? So you lose all your R factor. You want to make sure your insulation is butted tight with one another. Anytime if you're doing a single layer of insulation, and there comes the smell of money, as we call in the industry. So polyiso is also referred to, you'll hear the roofers refer to as iso, okay? But that's what is polyisoranic insulation. Has an R factor of 5.6 per inch, okay? And, and like I said, there are a number of different um, mineral fiber insulations uh, that, that do just as good a job. They have different features in that, and you have to research that for your own use. One of the things that uh, happens in the industry a lot is everybody refers to it as flat roofing. This is not flat roofing. This is low slope roofing. According to the National Building Code, we have to provide positive drainage to the drain. All we're trying to do is collect the water, let it sit on top until gravity can pull it towards the drain and off the roof so it, it performs its duty. So here they're just gonna, what we do is mop the fiber board to the polyiso. So you can see they got their mop, they're dipping it in. You don't wanna put too much on. Now all these boards would be normally mopped like this, but like I said, in the interest of time, we, we're just showing you how it goes down. Now in the center where the drain goes, we would create a sloped insulation, which they call a drain sump. This one's a four by four fiberboard um, drain slope. So they're doing the same thing. They're gonna mop it in, and that'll give you your positive drainage you need to get to the drain and get the water off the roof. These are pre-cut by manufacturers. They come in nice square details you put in very simple and, uh, and it's very easy to use. Now, you can get all types of insulation and you can taper them all. So they're all universal, they're all very useful, they all have their better different properties and that's what you wanna evaluate on your roofing system. Now we're gonna look at doing our, starting our four ply. In this first section, as I said on the field, we're going to do uh, four ply type four glass. Okay, so we're starting with a quarter roll because we need four plies. So you start with a quarter roll at the edge. So we'll put the mop down and we'll put in the, the first layer. Going up the cant to enclose it. 
so it has, it's watertight. Now they're tamping it down so there's no air pockets. Make sure there's no fish mouse. Okay, we want to keep everything nice and tight. Next, they'll go with a, a half a roll. Now, as they're putting the half a roll in, you'll see that it's starting to extend out and then we can keep going by a quarter roll each time and to get our true four ply. When we cut, no matter where we want to do a cut test, we want to cut, we want to be able to peel bark and have four layers of felt all mopped together. Not two and two, four layers. There are two types of felt. There's type four, Actually, there's three. There's glass felt, inorganic, inorganic glass, and there's organic felt. Now they'll do a three-quarter roll. Um, and there's the original organic felt, number 15 felt. Okay. You can marry the two of them. There are different application procedures. The, the learning curve we had with the glass felt was you can't walk on it. If you walk on it, you displace the asphalt, you have a leak. So there's a spot where, where a leak would come up. And you can see we want a continuous layer of asphalt. We want it about the thickness of a quarter is the perfect thickness. Okay, and that'll give you a nice true four ply. A fish mouth is simply a little lip like this. Okay, if you get a fish mouth like that, you have to cut it and put a two ply system over top to fix it. Otherwise, it could leak. Now they'll do a full roll. And then now if you go back to the corner up to flashing, you'll see when you cut it and you do you take it apart, you dissolve the asphalt in testing, we'll have four plies. And that's a true roof that we're looking for. So you can imagine that you're dealing with uh, 500 degrees asphalt on a 95, a 95 degree day and humid. You go through a lot of water. Now there are some tricks that you can't do with fiberglass that you could do with organic and gang rolling is one of them with a fiber or the organic felt system you should be able to start one roll and do about four or five together and kick them out move them all you can't do that with fiberglass so now you'll see they're cutting the line so that they're moving over nine inches so that we can continue the roof and we'll have four plies all the way through So if you see here, oops, sorry. If you see here, you see how important it is to get a full mopping. You notice the kettle's not here, it's outside. We always keep a kettle guy with it because it's very dangerous. You have propane around it. You have uh, asphalt that can start on fire. So you need to monitor it 100%. The kettle man is in charge of all the safety on the ground, okay? Asphalt comes now in bags, or we still have our kegs that we used to do. Or on large jobs, we can buy hot liquid where they pump it from a tanker right into the kettle, bring it up to the proper temperature, and pump it up onto the roof. It's still a very viable system in Ontario. There are parts of the country that roofers don't even own kettles, like in Vancouver and that. But it's still viable here.
one of the things, excuse me, one of the things we always have to do is check the temperature. You want to be 450 degrees. Uh, when you're mopping felts, there's what they call EVT, and that's the ultimate temperature. What we want is the asphalt to be like 10W30 motor oil. So you pour it on and it goes nice and solid. The hotter it gets, the thinner it gets. It becomes like water. You're not getting enough coverage. It looks like you have a full coverage, but when it cools, it shrinks. And so it won't bond. If you notice on the felt, it looks like what we call the wetting of the felt. When the asphalt's proper comes up through, wets the felt, locks onto the fiber, and pulls it down and locks it into place. This is what we call a very redundant system because you have four chances to make this watertight. That's as far as you're going, right? Okay. That's as far as you're going, and then you're gonna do this one? Okay. Over top of this system, we would put a flood coat of asphalt, usually between 60 to 70 pounds, and then we would embed pea gravel. The pea gravel in the top coating keeps the pea gravel in, in place, and the pea gravel protects the membrane from the sun and the asphalt so it doesn't oxidize and dry out. One of the beauties of a four ply, when you put gravel on top of any system, it's a automatically a class A fire rating from the external, okay? Because stone doesn't burn very quick. You notice how on the felt there are ply lines. That's to help. That's a guide for the roofers to to install. Sorry, to install the uh, felt in a straight line. Uh, it is just a guide. Sometimes the machine in their manufacturing goes a little wonky, so you have to be able to adjust. This is a fiberglass base sheet. Okay. This is what we call a hybrid system where we use a modified asphalt. So they take uh, modifiers and, and add different properties to the asphalt. They make a roll into it and it provides a very strong system. It enables you to get a, a 20 year warranty with three plies of glass on top of that all laminated together. Okay, it performs very well. And it goes down just the same as, as your uh, fiberglass felts do. The only difference is you can walk on it right away. It's not going to displace any asphalt. You can see they're pulling back far enough on this piece so that they can see it get stringy. So they, they, don't, they, don't, they know they don't have any cold spots or an area where it's not fully bonded. This, this membrane is constructed with a fiberglass reinforcement in, and it's coated on both sides with modified asphalt, okay? Has sand on both sides because if, if you didn't have the sand, it would stick together and it wouldn't unroll. So it's a release agent. Yes? Can you 
there there are a number of different products that they try to use. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's, we find it's worse than, than that. Why don't you guys come back to the school board and we get a lot of complaints from staff? I know your your staff complained when we pull up and the kettle hasn't even been lit for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a, a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> we try to um, school boards always try to do the work during during the summer so that's not affected. I know it's not always possible. There's emergency repairs and that. No, there are some that are better than others. Uh, uh, if you leave me your card after, I'll get you some names in that. Okay. So here they're they're tying the system in. You see a little void there, so they're going to touch that up. There we go. The thing about EVT, there, there was a lot of misconceptions when it came out because it's the ultimate temperature to get the proper viscosity that you're looking for. The problem with it was EVT is only uh, um, used, should be used, and is applicable to when you're mopping felts. Some consultants and uh, owners want to use EVT when they're mopping uh, modifieds, it doesn't apply, or fiber board or a cover board or insulation. And that, that doesn't, it's not apply. And it should only be taken at the point of application, the temperature at, as they're mopping it. Just do one side. Well, I'll explain it. But. Typically, we we would start um, we would start in the center and work our way out with our plies so that they're overlap, so the water runs over top instead of against. But for the sake of the demonstration, they're just gonna um, do a, a, four, a three ply on top of here. Three. You always you start to low and work your way back, so it, it's like a shingle effect, and the water runs over your seams, not against them. Yeah, the, the first layer is a modified asphalt. Okay, and this is a type 4 glass. Yeah, so it's a hybrid system, a hybrid BUR system where we have the fiberglass to reinforce it, the fiberglass felt or modified to reinforce it, and then three plies together. Together makes a, a bulletproof roof. Four, four plies. Yeah, yeah, but the, the bottom one is 3.5 millimeter thick. So, so you put down a base one and then the, then the then three ply. Yep, and you tie them all. Yep, the base one is the the modified sheet, and then three plies on top of that. So you're putting the second ply in, and now it'll put the third. So when you cut it, you have four plies. Uh, type 4 glass. The same as the 3 ply, but it was 4 plies. No no modified sheet. Yeah. Oh, the That's right. That's a standard system in the industry. 4 plies. This is an upgrade from it with a modified base sheet. They're both 4 plies. No 6? No. That's right. Yeah, you're only changing the first layer from 
the first section to the second section. And it gives you a longer performance. Okay, now we're gonna look at doing our flashings. One of the weaknesses of, of type four glass is you can't run glass up a wall and keep the asphalt in it and slide down. So you have to do other systems. The first system we're gonna do is, is a modified base sheet and a, a mop base sheet and a cap sheet. Okay, so they, we've nailed it on the outside just for ease, ease of tear off after. So they'll mop up the wall and they'll coat it. You can see uh, they're in the corner doing the flashing there. The base sheet usually comes out uh, four inches onto the flat roof from the bottom of the can. Only four inches. Only four inches and then the cap sheet will come out six inches and overlap it. What, what is the first sheet you're putting down? It's, a, it's the same base sheet. It's a 180. Oh, uh, it's so a polyester. Base, yep. Modified yep. This is a two-ply modified flashing system. So it consists of, of a 180 poly, uh, polyethylene reinforced uh, base sheet and a 250 cap. So it's, it's a bulletproof system. And it has granules on it, so ultraviolet. The base cap, the base cap there, right? Sorry? The base cap, you have, you have four, the four layers. Uh, not on the wall, you have two layers on the wall. Yeah. But it's all modified base, modified roofing. You can see they're, they're tucking it down. The last thing you want to do is get any tensing. This is why um, a lot, some manufacturers um, say it's okay to put modified on without a can strip. I think it enhances the performance. Gives you a 45 instead of trying to tuck that tough membrane down into a 90 degree. Now they're putting a 250 cap on. So this is, again, it has sand on the back. If, if they have, if they have a polyethylene on the back of the sheet, you cannot mop it. That polyethylene is meant to be burned off with a torch, not to be mopped to or glued to. One of the most important things to do that you see is doing now is, is to take off that tape because that tape will stop it from bonding. Now, typically we take the flashing up the wall, over the top, and down. And if, if, if there's no parapet and it's a low slope, like a low parapet or a can strip, we take the, can the membrane down past the edge of the wood blocking in the wall, whether if the wall is block or brick, so that if water gets up and over, it goes out of the system, not into it. You do nail it, yes. On the outside, they nail it, Until, especially because they don't put the metal flashing on right away. You don't want the wind to rip it off. The higher you go, the more the wind you have, right? flashing okay another option we have for flashing is elastomeric systems and there's two ways of putting on elastomeric you can use hot asphalt or you can use cold applied so the first section we're going to do is hot asphalt we're going to mop it and then it comes over top and you'll see it go down. And then the next section we'll show you is with a cold applied adhesive. Elastomeric sheeting is, is very flexible. So you wanna make sure it's embedded very tightly.
Now this, this membrane would be, as well as modified, would be protected by metal flashing, which helps keep the longevity going. To help terminate the edge on the last mirror uh, flashing, we're using a reinforcement mat over top. It'll be mopped in and then mopped over top. And that just helps to keep everything together, bond it, and seal it from peeling up. Because most of your stress is going to be in the walls. The way we build buildings today is a very lightweight construction. So you're virtually building four walls and a floating roof. So as your walls move in and out, you need your flashings to be more pliable and, and in order to perform. 95% of your leaks happen at some sort of penetration or the flashings. It's very easy to get the roof put down in the center roof properly where it doesn't leak. It's where we have to terminate and start over and accommodate certain areas. Now we're going to move over to the codify system. It's the same concept. The only difference is we don't use hot asphalt. We use uh, cold adhesive. There are a number of manufacturers out there that make different systems. The whole idea is to buy the membrane from the manufacturer that buy, makes it adhesive or has approved adhesive. So you're buying a system. You get a system warranty. <laughs> As you can see, they're pouring out of the pail. And what they'll use, they'll use a notch rubber squeegee to get a nice even coat in order to embed this. And you, you can see where, where you want the nice even coat. It doesn't matter how careful you are with this system, this stuff flies. It's like a magnet, it flies all over the place. You find it all over your shirt. Uh, more labor intensive and the adhesive is, is more because you're holding it down that way. But you don't need as much equipment. It depends on what your first system is. There, there's, there's an idea out there that what we can do to roofs is just keep recovering them. The problem is, is why are you recovering them? Because they had a leak. Anytime water gets into your system, it's trapped in there. You lose all your R value. Your insulation is, once it becomes saturated, is no more. The other problem is it rots, okay? So that you don't have proper adhesion anymore wind can blow it off. So just by recovering, recovering, recovering is not a good system. The only way I would recommend you recover is to do an infrared scan. And that's with a, a gun at night. It tells you where your wet areas are. You cut them out, you replace them, and then you find to do something. The other thing you have to look at is your weight, your load weight. You know, we have, to, in Southwestern Ontario, we have to follow our, our standards for snow loads. The other thing you want to watch for is, is water. Water on the roof is the worst thing. Ponding water. It does a number of things, but the biggest thing it does is add weight. One inch of water, 12 inches by 12 inches, is 5.22 pounds. I think we build for 13, 13 pounds snow load per square foot. So that takes almost a third of it away. Three layers. Uh, no, uh, coating. Yeah. You can see it's brooming the felt in so it gets a nice strong adhesion into the cement. We want a proper adhesion. You could use a roller too.
Depends on the manufacturer. Some manufacturers don't like the roller because it squeezes the cement out too much. Depends on the weight of the roller. So there's a lot of restrictions that you have to take care of. Same philosophy, about nine inches. So you, you get going that way. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? Uh, it's not necessary in some codified systems. The question was, why is there no can strip on that side? Some manufacturers don't recommend or require um, can strip in this, this application. So you have to check with the manufacturer or your roofer. Your roofer will know their systems. There's a number of different types of cans too. You can use fiber can, you can use a perlite can, which is more fire resistant. You can use a, a steel can, you can use a concrete can, a wood can. So there's a lot of options. But you still need, you still need a gravel to protect the, the surface, no? No, not on this one because they coat it with a white or aluminum paint. Yeah, but you don't need any, any gravel at all? No. Some of them you may, you have to check with the manufacturers. All the systems are different a little bit, so you want to check with them. The code applied is, is put at about the same rate as a hot asphalt, 25 pounds, okay? So 2.5 US gallons uh, per 100 square feet is a, equivalent to about 25 pounds a square, which is the same as a mopping of asphalt. One of the the difference between cold apply and hot apply, yeah, is the absence of hot, but also you have more solvents in cold apply. Um, the solvents the solvents attack the ozone layer, right? Uh, so you have to be careful on how much solvents you use. There are some cold apply systems that are very low in solvents, but they cost more because it costs more to manufacture. So you have to weigh hurting the environment or saving a penny. Did you be showing the uh, No, that was the uh, earlier, the modified. You could, you could mop your base sheet and torture cap on this system. Some people do that. That's, yes, sir. This is probably the minimum amount of warranty, the standard four ply glass. This one will give you an upgraded to, um, you'll get 10 years out of this one, five, 15 to 20 years out of that one, depending on the manufacturer. And what's your warranty on the 15? 15 year on the cold apply. No, labor is this. This would be a full warranty, ten-year labor, twenty-year labor and material, and fifteen-year labor and material. Yeah, there are there are a number of other issues we'd run onto a roof typically, curbs, vent stacks, um, guide wires. 
power lines. There's all kinds of flashings that we would incorporate into this, but only having an hour, there's no way we could show you all that. You know? And there'd be no room on the deck to move. You know? So we're just trying to give you a synopsis of exactly how it goes down the system and what we have to do to it. But every, every manufacturer has a full scale set of details for you to handle any problem you have. And they all have technical people out in the field to help you. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. So you can see it can be a slow, tedious uh, exercise to do this system. Um, it's not as hot as using hot. It's not as dangerous because you don't have a chance of getting burnt. Um, but they're all good systems and they all work. And they're all viable systems in Ontario. Ontario is probably the largest BUR market in the country. And it, for good reason. It's, it's a system that works. You can do that. The last thing we have to show you, and they're going to show once they finish this up, is do the cold uh, elastic merrick. It's just using the cold adhesive going up the wall with a special trowel, which gives you the proper application and the amount you need. And that's that's it. You know, um, like I said. The two center pieces would have gravel on there, asphalt and gravel to protect it. Now, there are some manufacturers who have a white gravel you can put on to give you um, a, a white roof reflectivity. Yep. It's just collecting all the excess asphalt. Whenever you're using any type of adhesive, more is not better. You want just the right amount. That's why they specify a notch trowel that gives you the exact amount you need without going over. What happens is to, to, as a carrier to get all these adhesives to work, they use solvents. And if you put too much on there and you trap that solvent in there, it will never liquefy. Sometimes it'll even the solvents will eat through your membrane. Okay, so and it'll be a big bubble. So he puts it on with a regular trowel, and then he has a special trowel with uh, uh, notches, which will allow him to put on the proper amount. There's two schools of thought. When you're doing flashing, some people like to work from the bottom up, some people like to work from the top down. It's what you're comfortable with. As long as you get it in nice and tight, there's there's no right or wrong reason. Some some people find it easier doing one way than the other, that's all. But this core on the hot is not compatible. Is it com com compatible? Yeah, it's compatible. Right? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Because it's, the hot is already cooled. Yeah? Yeah, the asphalt's already cooled, so it's okay. It's all right. You'll, you'll see he's still bringing the adhesive out onto the roof past the edge of the can so that we can get a nice, nice solid bond.
I have to check with the manufacturer on the temperature limitations on uh, when you can put this on. Some, some uh, adhesives you can, as long as you keep it at room temperature uh, before you apply it, it's okay, but you have to check with their requirements. It depends on the manufacturer's adhesive. It depends on the manufacturer. Some of them have so much solvents in there, you can go to minus 20. Minus 10 won't do it. Some can go to minus 20. Yeah, depends on the type of adhesive. You can see they're working very hard to embed it. Make sure there's no pockets or air bubbles in there. Now they're going to terminate the edge just the same as they did before. Now they're putting the same mesh in and then they'll coat the mesh so that we have nice sealant. Just reinforces everything. It's a, a fabric just to give it some reinforcement so you don't have just pure adhesive on there. So it, it, you put the over it. Yep, they're doing that. They'll do that now. See? It seals it. Okay. Okay, I think we're just about done here. He's just cutting the hole for the drain. We would set the drain in. Actually, we'll just show the drain, okay? And then you would flash the drain in, but we don't want to have to tear that all out. That's good. That's good. No, no, just show the drain. Yep, so that's the drain. We cut off the, the stem so, so because we only have an inch and a half insulation and there's no connecting pipe. So we would just set that in and you would flash it over top. Okay, that's our uh, presentation. I want to thank everybody involved.